A very warm welcome to all. Today, I, Ria Khanna, a legal intern under Lexis and Company, am here to present my topic, Codification of International Law. This particular video that you're watching is part two of the topic. Before we move forward with this topic, let us first revise what we actually understood in the previous video. So in the previous video, first we understood what this codification means. It means a systematic statement of whole or part of law in written form. Further, we understood the meaning of codification of international law. Then I explained that earlier it was only customs which were followed by the international law in terms of international law by the states. But the problem with them was that those customs lacked precision and they were vague and it was difficult for the courts to apply them and to make uh, the, and make them binding on the states. So to ensure uniformity and remove those uncertainties, a need of for codified laws was important and was required. So that is why the idea of codification was given by Jeremy Bentham in 1789. Further, a uh, French convention also made an attempt to draw up a declaration of rights of nation in 1792. Same way, Professor Francis Weber of Columbia University Law School, New York, also attempted to codify the laws of the war. Now, after that, I explained certain codification of international law. For example, I explained Paris Declaration of 1856, which had three major points because it attempted to codify the international law for the sea where the three principles were uh, declared. First was privateering, number two, neutral flag to protect the contraband, uh, neutral flag to protect the goods of the enemy, and number three, a blockade. Further, we understood the first Hague Peace Conference of 1899 where three major con uh, conventions were adopted in the conference. First, Convention for Peaceful Settlement of International Dispute, Convention to Law and Custom of War on Land, and Convention to Naval Warfare. Then we also talked about Second Hague Peace Conference of 1907, which took place from 15 June to 18 October, where 13 conventions related to warfare and neutrality on war and sea were adopted. Further, I also explained codification under League of Nations. So League of Nations was a, uh, <clears throat> was a group of uh, nations formed after the, after the end of World War I. And uh, in this particular, uh, in, the, in the codification under League of Nations, seven topics were uh, enunciated for codification. That was nationality, territorial waters, state responsibility for damages, uh, international conference procedure, and uh, exploitation of products of sea and piracy. Now let's continue with our talk. With now let's continue with the topic. So today we shall be understanding Hague Conference of 1930 codification under United Nations. So Hague Conference of 1930. After considering the report of the committee the assembly decided that a conference should be held at Hague for the purpose of codifying the topics. First, nationality, territorial waters, responsibility of state for the damage done to foreigners in their territories. Then in 1928, a the council reported that various other topics were also necessary for codification, like laws related to function and competencies of councils. Three committees were set up for each topics, that is nationality, territorial waters, and others. So no general agreement could be reached in regard to the territorial waters and responsibility of the states. But the Committee on Nationality adopted various conventions on the questions relating to conflict of nationality laws and statelessness. However, the conventions adopted were ratified by only a few states and failed to receive wide support. Thereafter, codification attempts of League of Nations was wasted. Now let's talk about codification under the United Nations. Article 13 of the United Nations Charter lays down the General Assembly shall initiate studies and make recommendations for the purpose of promoting international cooperation in the political field. 
and encouraging the progressive development of international law and its codification. So first is the International Law Commission. So to undertake the task of progressive development of international law and its codification, UN General Assembly through a resolution uh, dated 21st November 1947 established the International Law Commission. Now under Article 1 of the International Law Commission, the Commission shall have for its object the promotion of the progressive development of the international law and its codification. Topics for codification were chosen by the commission itself through general assembly, though general assembly had to approve them. Now, the next is the uh, Nuremberg principles. So at the second session of the International Law Commission, the commission formulated a set of seven principles of international law, international law recognized in the charter and the judgment of Nuremberg Tribunal. The General Assembly thereafter sent the Commission's formulation to the member government for their comments. The General Assembly directed the International Law Commission to formulate principles of international law recognized in the Charter as well as in the judgment of Nuremberg Tribunal. Second, to prepare a draft code of offenses against the peace and security of mankind. Third, to prepare a draft declaration on the rights and duties of state. And four, to suggest the desirability and possibility of establishing an international judicial body for trial of genocide and certain other crimes. Now, through General Assembly, a number of conventions have been adopted, like Convention on Genocide, Convention on Status of Refugees, Convention of, on Suppression and Punishment of Crime of Apartheid as well, Convention on Right of Child, etc., so United Nations work on these conventions and many more continuously keeps on adding to the international law. So thank you so much for watching my video. That's all for today. Thank you so much.